happens is often in science, you kind of move one direction or another just based on what successes you're having in the laboratory. So we had been making chemical receptors, in fact I did that during my postdoctoral studies even, for many years just to understand how nature binds one molecule, basically make mimics of enzymes to try to understand nature better. So I had some of these receptors sitting in my office in little vials, glass vials, and I'm pondering what else can I do with these things? Um, but at the same time, I was drinking a Fresca one day, okay, <laughs> um, and noted some of the ingredients, and then realized that one of these compounds sitting in a glass vial, that could probably signal the ingredient. It was specifically citrate in this case. So we made our very first sensor for citrate, and that sensor actually is used worldwide now for citric acid. But then to go deeper, well, there's a lot of things in Fresca, and of course, in reality, get much broader. There's a lot of chemicals in wine. There's a lot of chemicals in many other complex mixtures, blood, urine, saliva, that you would want to be able to analyze for, but potentially, could you analyze the for them in a manner that's similar to how we do this with the senses of taste and smell. My research involves physical organic chemistry. This is the study of the actual natural ways that organic chemistry operates. What is the actual mechanisms behind organic chemical transformations. We also study what's known as supramolecular chemistry. This is a field of chemistry that involves molecular recognition, how one molecule recognizes, grasps onto, and holds onto another molecule to perform a catalytic reaction or to send out some kind of a signal when that molecule is present. What we've done with physical organic chemistry and supramolecular chemistry is make chemical sensors Again, these are organic molecules that recognize another analyte and when they bind it, cause an optical signal to occur. And what I mean by that is maybe something starts glowing or the color changes or fluorescence is modulated. So the molecular recognition event and the physical interactions between the molecules lead to this signaling. The signaling can be used, therefore, to quantitate the concentration of the molecule and just the fact that the molecule actually was present that you were trying to target. Now, we do this with our senses of taste and smell, so what we've done that's really quite different than many other research groups around the world is incorporate the mechanisms, these mammalian mechanisms of uh, taste and smell into an overall platform that can recognize hundreds of chemicals at once, such as in wine, beer, scotch whiskeys. This is a new area for organic chemistry to move into. This means to the field that we can use organic chemistry other than in the classic areas such as total synthesis and the development of pharmaceuticals. It's a extension of organic chemistry that moves into the analytical chemistry side where we can take analytical chemistry principles that might use materials or enzymes or antibodies and show that instead we can actually use organic chemistry, perform chemical synthesis with the general tools of organic chemistry, but make receptors that are then used in the analytical application. What keeps me interested in mimicking the senses of taste and smell are all the kinds of applications we can put this to. I've been brought forward the notion of trying to analyze explosives, so improvised explosive devices, IEDs. So we have a grant from the Navy to do that. Um, I've been told to analyze oysters because you know some people get sick on certain oysters in certain months of the year and et cetera. Just it's 
the number of applications are so numerous of what we've delved into, it just keeps evolving into new areas. So molecular recognition classically has involved what are known as non-covalent interactions. Hydrogen bonding, dipole-dipole, hydrophobic effects, interactions that rapidly exchange. But now there's a whole class of new molecular recognition interactions which are covalent bonding but reversible. Very strong interactions between one molecule and another because you're forming a covalent bond, yet kinetically the covalent bonds are really labile. So you can latch on to something and hold it very tightly thermodynamically, but kinetically everything exchanges very rapidly. So this is where we're putting the majority of our interest because as physical organic chemists we're really good at understanding thermodynamics and kinetics but now we're going to apply these reversible covalent bonding interactions to once again analytical applications that are analogous to how our senses of taste and smell operate. We have studied glow sticks in the sense of taking the mechanism of what's known as chemiluminescence this is the induction or transmission of light induced by a chemical reaction and learned how to intercept various steps in the chemiluminescence mechanism to be able to turn those steps on or off and turn them on and off specifically by the addition of an analyte or this molecule that we want to signal the presence of. So by understanding the organic chemical steps, we might trigger one to only occur when the target analyte is added. Probably the most uh, well-known application of this is to target nerve agents. So some people you know, might be familiar with sarin and somin. These are incredibly toxic nerve agents that people worry about terrorists using. We devised a way in which to trigger the chemiluminescence when a sarin or somin surrogate, we don't use the real nerve agents, but a surrogate of those analytes is present so that when you have that gas present, something will start glowing before your eyes. You could even have letters written that say sarin and they just, the letters start to appear just like a glow stick glows. The thing that we strive for the most in my research group is to make some novel, some new, unheard of method of chemical sensing. Taking again all the principles of physical organic chemistry and supramolecular chemistry and trying to come up with something that's clever and never been done before when I go around the world and give seminars and lectures and short courses in various countries, the fact that other people are latching on to what we've done, emulating